On today's show... Well, let's drink, man. I'm, yeah. I'm ready to get cassé and let's do this. <laughs> we visit a third-generation distiller who spins an old family tradition with a new school twist. Ooh, that's that'll do the job stuff. right there. That, oh, yeah, that'll do the job. And for lunch... I'm about to dive into this, y'all. We land in Fry Daddy Heaven where the grease is hot and your yeah, stomach's always go. smiling. Look at that. Oh, man. Then I do some shopping for the missus. Next time, I'm going to come shop for my wife for her birthday, not for something I did wrong. And this local boutique mixes fashion with family. I'm DJ Rhett, and I'm traveling all over Louisiana looking for the hippest and most unique cuisines and adventures the Gulf State has to offer. The Gulf State's not just our home, it's a way of life, it's a lifestyle, and it's all next on What's Good Louisiana. You know, here in southeastern Louisiana, it's always raining. In fact, Tropical Storm Beta is on top of us right now. And what better way to celebrate than to have a hurricane party? That's right, we're going to Bayou Terrebonne Distillers right now and party. Let's check it out. I've always been interested in how whiskey is actually made. So I decided to come see the local expert, whiskey maker Noah Liret. His family's been making whiskey for a long time, Sha. All right, so we are where the magic happens, Noah. Tell me how you got into this business. Tell me, is it a family tradition or y'all just jumped into it? Tell me about this. Making whiskey has been a part of the Lirette family tradition since Prohibition. Our great grandma, Lily Lirette, she uh, made moonshine during Prohibition with a little six gallon copper pot still. She had so much lore and legend around her product. My pa would always tell me that the revenueers left her alone because her moonshine was too damn good. <laughs> so. That's the standard we make our product to. Walking into this building, I know it has its own history because it, it, I mean, it looks like it had some wear and tear in this building. Y'all didn't just make it look like this, oh, right? No. Tell, tell me a little bit about the history of no. the building itself. So this is uh, the old Bloomin' Bajeron Dry Shrimp Packing Plant. It was built in 1921, so it's almost 100 years old. It was a perfect place to make whiskey. Our purpose is to preserve a family tradition along with the culture and beauty of the Bayou region. So renovating an old building on Main Street was a natural extension of that. Let's look at how we make uh, whiskey, you know, just uh, take us through the process, so. Yeah, so if you're gonna make alcohol, you need sugar, right? So when you ferment sugar, you get alcohol. Now, if you're gonna make a whiskey, you gotta convert starches to sugar uh, in grain. So we use corn. We use corn because it's the only grain that I can get in Louisiana. I want it to be Louisiana focused. So all our corn comes from Louisiana. Once we have that grain kind of broke down and cooked, we can pitch some malted barley, which has an enzyme in it that converts those starches to sugar. Right. Once we have that, we pitch the, the yeast, let it ferment for about two weeks, and then we can go ahead and distill it. I got you. So the sugar, the yeast is eating the sugar, and the waste product of that is the alcohol, yeah, right? Okay. Pretty much. Definitely. That's right. And we, then you filter that down a couple of more times until you get it to the either flavor or color you want. Is that how it works? So we distill everything twice. So we don't distill anything just once. Everything gets ran twice, and uh, we run it twice to clean it up. And a lot of that, a lot of that process is tasting and smelling to know what you want and you know, where to make your cuts at, your tail cuts, your head cuts, all those different things. Uh, so it's a lot of tasting, it's a lot of smelling. Uh, takes some trial and error, to be honest, man. Right. Luckily, we've been doing it for 10 years before this, so we know what we're doing. That's a fun job to just see if whiskey tastes good or if it gets you the right. Part of my job is drinking whiskey at 7 a.m. every morning. <laughs> So. That sounds like the life, man. Yeah, it's not too bad. Well, I want to taste some of the stuff. You ready to start? Yeah, let's I mean, go. Let's do it. Let's tie right. one on. All right, man. All right, Noah, now we at the favorite part of the show, which is where I can sample. I feel like I'm at Sam's, where I could just go and get little samples. So uh, so this is the steel, your, your mama's steel you were telling us about, right? Yeah, that's that's a- That's the original. That's a 100 year plus old steel what? that my great grandma made moonshine with. and. Uh, she did that to help support her 13 kids that she had. She was on Bayou Terrebonne. That's why we're called Bayou Terrebonne Distillers. Oh. And we call our product Contraband. We named that after her because, you know, her illicit activities on that bike. Oh, so, I got you. I yeah. got you. So speaking of your products, where, so you got Contraband. What else you got and where we can find them at? So we got Contraband, which is our clear corn whiskey, made all with Louisiana corn, Louisiana certified by the state. 
and we also have an aged whiskey called LA1. Now we didn't make that, uh, but we went and get the last barrels from Dodder and Pelchick Distillers in Thibodeau when they closed down. So the cool thing about LA1, besides that it's a great whiskey, is that it's the first aged whiskey in Louisiana since Prohibition, and we have the last of it. Oh, wow. So uh, we'll be distributing that throughout the state here pretty soon. Right now, you can find both our products in the Tri-Parish area. You can get it from us directly, or you can go to Rouse's, Canada's, Marcel's, and go pick up a bottle too. Uh, you, you speak local, and uh, I saw on the bottle here, it's certified Louisiana. What entails in that? So besides our family tradition and us you know, preserving that and you know some culture of the Bayou region, that's the thing I'm most proud of. So to be certified Louisiana, 80% of the ingredients must come from the state. We make our whiskey with a lot of corn. I do that because it's the only grain, only whiskey grain I can get in Louisiana. So uh, because I do that, I take the time to mill it here myself. Uh, we are certified by the Department of Ag as, you know, Louisiana. And I'm, it's really only a whiskey that, that has that certification too in the state, so we're proud of that. Awesome. Well, let's drink, man. I'm, yeah. I'm ready to get cassé and let's do this. <laughs> That's a Manny Fresh. And if you look at our board, all of our drinks are Louisiana themed. That's what we do here. When we're not making whiskey, we're drinking whiskey and coming up with funny names. Yeah. So let me let me let me let me taste a little bit of this right here. Yeah. And like we said, that's a Manny Fresh, and there ain't nothing more Louisiana than Manny Fresh. No, man. All right. Well, cheers, cheers buddy. Brother. Cheers, man. Mm. Cool. That's that'll do the job stuff. right there. That, oh yeah, that'll do the job. I would drink these while I'm cutting the grass, and if you see me lip lip sync while I'm cutting the grass, I'll be all over. Are the your place lines gonna be there, straight? Buddy. No, it okay. won't be. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. <laughs> 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 Noah made them drink strong. I'm already cossed, and it ain't even ten o'clock. But you gotta do what you gotta do when you're making good whiskey. Well, Noah, thank you so much for taking the time today to uh, bring us through the, you know, the tour and everything. I never knew that whiskey was, you know, going to be that educational, man. But it, uh, it yeah. tastes good, too, man. So yeah, man. cheers. Thank you cheers. so much. Appreciate it. And, uh, you know, I can't stay here any longer, man, because I'm going to have to sleep on the couch over yeah, there. Yeah, I, so. I got a cot. You got a cot? I got a cot. We'll put you up. Well, maybe we could have a couple of more Manny Freshers. That sounds all good. Right? Yeah. Hey, are y'all open on the weekend? I mean, That's right, man. We're open to the public every weekend, Friday through Sunday, for cocktails, tours. Uh, event venues, whatever you need, uh, come visit us, come have a drink. We love our customers. We have a good time here. Yep. All right, well, come get you some Manny Freshes and a whole bunch of stuff right here at Bayou Terrebonne Distillers. Yeah. Cheers, man. All right, Noah. We'll see y'all next time. It's mm -hmm. good. Oh, wow. That's good. Wow. Coming up next. Dude, I really have to do this interview right now with all this food in front of me. Soft shell crab right there. So for today's lunch, I'm at my local favorite, the Shack, to satisfy my midday cravings. And look, they got everything from fried pickles to crab soup. And their fried shrimp platter, oh, c'est bon. Let's go, where's the, where's the wave? Boy, I can't wait to eat. The Shack has been my go-to spot for lunch for years. And today, we sat down with owner Doug Davis. Dude, I really have to do this interview right now with all this food in front of me. If I fall asleep, it's your fault, okay? All right. Take the blame. So we're here with the owner, Mr. Doug Davis. What's up, bud? What's happening, man? Thanks for joining us, man. Look, I have to ask you. I was in the back just now, and there's so much commotion going on back there. Why did you get into the restaurant business? Explain to us why you did that and how long you been in for it. I guess uh, I guess I love controlled chaos is all I can say. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's, you have to love it to see people's faces when they eat something that's really good and how, how you sit around and talk to them. You know, you get a guy that comes in from out of town, staying at the hotel and eat at the bar and he just, you know, talk to him for a while where he's, where he's from, what mm -hmm. he, you know, how is he enjoying himself and just, you know, hospitality, South Louisiana stuff. Right. Now it is. I've been doing this probably, I think we're at 22 years now. Started right here in this, this building. You know, just helping out on weekends and stuff like that, and it, it's it's gone from there. You know. Just yeah. So the restaurant. I mean, I know it's going through a couple of different name changes. You were involved in all of that too, because I know it's been you know different several different restaurants. Yes. But um, back in the day, I, you know, I, I like I said, I started here 22 years ago, and then we decided to expand out, and we opened up a uh, another little like a little to go location at the end of Barrow Street, 
And uh, in the middle of remodeling that is when another location came available that we really wanted. So we kind of put the to-go in place on hold and jumped onto that. And then we had two full-fledged restaurants that just became monsters. Right. You know, consume a lot of time and stuff like that. And that didn't work out. But um, that's basically how it started, you know. But, right. yeah, through the transition of it all, I've, I've you know, it, we were all intertwined. Well, you only the, what's unique about this location is you only have one one spot, and it's right. on this side, the east side of Homa, which the east side of Homa has kind of died a little bit as far as like yep. all field business. Uh, you know, a lot of people moved on that side, but you got a nice little spot because, to be honest with you, you probably have one of the most popular restaurants on this on side this of town. Side, exactly, it's a niche. You know, it's a niche. People want a nice sit-down place. This is where they're coming on this side of town. And we do get a lot of people Friday, Saturday nights come from the other side of town to come eat seafood and stuff like that. But uh, you still got a good bit of the workforce that works here. So that it, it all benefits, you know. Guy comes here during the week and eats lunch and loves it. He's going to bring his wife back on Friday. Oh, definitely. You know? And look, so, our office is right down the road, too, so we're right, here. <laughs> right, exactly. So, um... I saw a lot of awards on the wall over there, the you know best uh, best of the Bayou and stuff like that. What do you pride yourself on over here at the Shack? Is it the bald seafood? Is it the fried? Or is it everything? What do you hang your hat on as far as your number one dish and what you put your love into over here? I mean, we put a lot of love into everything we right. do. Right. The boiled seafood. That's what we do the majority of our stuff with. Bald crawfish, bald shrimp and crabs, that's, you know, that's kind of where we hang our hat at. Lately, we've been doing a lot with soft shell crabs, trying to get in soft shell shrimp, both of those, really. Right. Back in the day, they used to throw all that overboard. Right, now, right. Now, I mean. Oh, no, you it, keep that. Oh, it's a delicacy now. <laughs> you got to keep mean, that. You specialty dishes and stuff like that. Get a shot of that. That's Louisiana soft shell crab right there. Pure, uh, what, probably caught, what, a week ago? No. But no. You, so, look, this came in this morning. That what? was alive that was this in, morning. That was in the body yeah. this morning. <laughs> I get that from a guy out of Des Almonds, and he brings them to me, you know, old school, in the flats, live crabs. Mm -hmm. And they just, I mean, it doesn't get any fresher so than that. I don't, no, it don't get any fresher than that. And, look, just to kind of tell you a story, we used to make these at, my, my parents oh, used to have oh. a bait shop. It is hard work, yes. let me tell you, because you have to get these things out at a certain time because they'll start hardening back up. So, and it, I and mean, it, just the just the sheer fact that you're gonna have enjoy a soft shell crab is just mind blowing. Because, like I said, you only have a few minutes to get that thing out of that's there. That's what they tell me. Like yeah. it's just minutes. Right. It, it'll start hardening up right after. So you gotta get you gotta watch them things. But I bet yeah. You. Soft shell crab. So that would be one of your number oh, one sellers yeah. here. Oh, yeah. What about definitely. the charbroiled oysters? Because those, yeah, I get them every single time. We so. sell a ton of charbroiled oysters. Right. And, and uh, you know, it's a fight right now to find oysters with the uh, storms coming through and stuff right. like that. But I mean, we just, we do the best we can, find what we can. And, but man, when, you know, when you start getting them cold months, there's nothing beats just some good fresh raw oysters oh, too, yeah. you know. Oh, definitely. And uh, we're getting in the heart of the football season, so oh, I'm sure yeah. people are starting to buy their, uh, you know, their lunches and their dinners every day. So. Yep. Appreciate you sitting down with us. No problem. We appreciate y'all I've been smelling this food by. for the last five minutes, and I have to dive <laughs> in. So, get it. if you want to get your kicks off in Homa, you need to come to the shack. Thanks so much, man. Look, you want? Yes, sir. You want some of this? Awesome. Appreciate oh, yeah. it. All right. Look. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Let's go. Look at that. Oh, man. I'm telling y'all, y'all need to get down here. Look, I'm like a little boy on Christmas morning. Mm. So no matter if it's lunch, dinner, or even on the weekends, you want to satisfy those fried cravings? Come right here to the shack. I'm about to dive into this, y'all. Look at this. Oh, man. A little seafood dip. Fresh Louisiana seafood. It don't get no better than this. That's cool. Jump in. You gonna eat that? When we come back... We chose Thibodeau because of the, the downtown. downtown. It's time for me to charge up them credit cards. We're in downtown Thibodeau. We're visiting a local business that mixes Cajun culture with boutique fashion. Welcome to Dear Boutique. I'm always looking for cool places to shop for my wife, and I think I found one. Look no further than the mother-daughter team of Shelly Robichaux and Brie Robichaux. How y'all doing? Thank y'all for having me today. Um, two reasons I came here today. One, because I'm in a doghouse and I need something for my wife, and I thought this pretty shop would entail, you know, get something that I can get out of the doghouse. And two, I come in here and look, <laughs> and there's all kind of stuff. I thought it was just a clothing store. Tell, tell me a little bit about the store, how long y'all been in business? 
So we opened actually four years ago, November 5th. November 5th. Yeah, so it'll be four years this year we opened up. We started out with a bath bomb store. Yeah, bath bomb. Not, not close My girls that. love that stuff. <laughs> yeah, probably we had, had a, some. We had a shop here, a little shop, and we had a big shop in Holma. Yeah. yeah. So then um, we eventually branched out into clothing. We we're actually supposed to be a jean store. Oh, okay. All <laughs> we, don't right. sell, we don't sell many <laughs> jeans now. Um, so then it morphed into more of like comfortable everyday wear. So when y'all were growing up, was this something that y'all were like real fashy, trendy type people, or is this something y'all just got into? <laughs> we were just or? laughing about that. It was a tomboy. Yeah, um, <laughs> not really. We we more so don't really follow like the trends. So if they like look at what's happening, and I guess in New York and all, it's kind of insane clothing. We more wanted stuff that you can wear every day, still be comfortable, but still be confident, and it fits your body, it fits you, but you don't have to worry about, oh, am I up to date with the 2020 fashion? Right, right. Today? It's that kind of stuff. Um, but no, we've always been interested in fashion, but not, I never thought. Not I like low-key. Yeah, right. I never thought I would. Do y'all design this. anything, or do you send it out? Do y'all have any, like? We do most we of do. our stuff in-house. I design t-shirts. I do artwork, I make jewelry. So like, all yeah. of the t-shirts behind you, she actually creates and makes. Okay. All the artwork and then also like all of the paintings. She also does all of the oyster jewelry. Okay. She's the talented one. I got gotcha. you. So <laughs> how did it morph into like kind of like the uh, the art stuff of the store? Of, of, of course I've it was first. I've always done the art and just, it was easy to do it here because Thibodeau is a place where everybody just really buys into uh, local, everything local. If you make it local, buy it local. So it was real easy here. They already wanted it. Yeah. So I had it and it was just an easy morph into this store. It's a casual store, so it's easy to have those type of things. We chose Thibodeau because of the atmosphere of the downtown. the downtown. Just because people in this town love their downtown. They actually come out to it, they support it. And then our downtown too does a lot of events and tries to actually help the businesses out Right, here. They, I've seen um, a lot of festivals with like sidewalk stuff. Yes. And, yeah, yeah, they have yes. Thibodeau Ville, which most people are familiar with. That's a, yeah, that's like, the probably biggest the biggest thing. one. Yeah. Um, but even throughout the year though, uh, our directors and even the businesses themselves try to get together. It's more of a community. So everyone here too, especially this front area where we're at, it's kind of like a little family. We had our little shop down. So it down. was it was just we just it was an easy kind conversion. Of yeah. Yeah. yeah, I got you. And got you. we always joked and said that our dream was to have a store that was kind of like in um <laughs> oh, what's the movie called? You got you mail when she's got her little bookstore. Oh yeah, yeah. Fox. The, the Fox, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. But I actually like this area, one, because there's a lot of foot traffic. There's a lot of diners around here. There's a lot of restaurants. So yes. a lot of foot traffic is generated yeah. around this area. And so. then also everything down here too is kind of, um, I think mostly attracted me to it. Everything pretty much is historical. Like I'm looking right. at the doors right now. Our building was actually built in 1830. Wow. So it's, I think the third or fourth oldest building in downtown. And then like we're across the street from Johnny's who is the Ford manufacturer. So it's kind of nice it's having- It's got some history yeah, with so it. Yeah, so everywhere you look, you know there's a, there's a, there's a piece of where this all started. Mm -hmm. And like the back um, bayou. That used to be where the boats came in to unload the fish and the produce that was sold here. Well, let's talk about when the store opens. Right now, we're closed on Mondays. Uh, we open Tuesday through Friday, noon to five, five. o'clock, and then Saturdays, nine to one. And do y'all have an online store where people can shop? It's up in <laughs> production right now. <laughs> She's currently working on it. We've been having some hiccups with trying to decide where we're gonna go with, but. Yeah. Facebook, um, Facebook, uh, yes, you can order through Facebook. We do um, invoicing through your email, and we do lives right now twice a week, sometimes random times throughout the week, too. Well, look, I'm here. I want to spend some money because y'all got to get me out the doghouse. Okay, can we walk around and yeah. start taking a look at some stuff? Yeah. All right, let's do sure. this because I don't want to be in trouble anymore. You know, I think I'm having a little bit more fun than I thought coming from a guy that knows nothing about fashion. I mean, they even put my university on pantalons. They even let you act the couillon. I dressed up as Macho Man Randy Savage. Ooh, yeah. Thank you, Bree. Next time, I'm gonna come shop for my wife for her birthday, not not for something I did wrong. Okay, all right. All right. We'll see y'all later. Now I gotta get dinner. Man, I'm gonna be in the doghouse again. 
So be sure to join us next time as we continue to search for the best the Gulf South has to offer. Right here on What's Good Louisiana.